Please stand with me as we go to the word of God. St. John chapter 10. And I'm going to ask the praise team to stand by. We're going to sing. And before we go to the word, how could I forget? Another special lady is in the house. Two other special ladies. Amen. Dr. Genevieve Tracy. Praise God. God bless you. Amen. And Sister Patricia Bowen. Wave your hand, Sister Pat. Amen. God bless you. Brought down the house last night with so many others who were here participating. I, I missed it. And I'll be honest with you. I, I was just too exhausted. I had just flown in from Miami, came straight into a wedding. I performed a wedding and my voice was shot. You might still hear it. And I knew I had to preach in Portmore this morning and then preach here and then stay for a new members connect and then go to the airport to pick up my wife and then take home my lovely wife and eat dinner with my lovely wife. And I'm not as young as I look and so I have to choose my fights. So as you rightly said, when you don't see me, just pray. I really wanted to be here and I should have been here. But, you know, I attended a funeral of a bishop and they said he was the plumber, he was the electrician, he was the mason, he was the carpenter for not just the church, but for even the members. And while that is good, if we don't use wisdom, we can lose some time here. God is in control. And they say hard work has never killed anyone, but me not take no chance. <laughs> me not take no chance. You see me? <laughs> so you can stay right there. <laughs> Praise God. But we, I saw some of the clips. It was awesome. Sister Pat, God bless you. When you left here, you were just a little tiny tot. Uh, who remember Sister Mendes? Amen. And they left here, but God is using her and blessing her. She invited Papa San to do a thing on one of her projects, and he did it. And we just pray success and that God will continue to bless you. So, St. John chapter 10, verse 27 and 28. Two verses there, then we're going to Ephesians 2. Then we go to Jeremiah 29. St. John 10, 27 and 28. 27, 2, 7. Everybody read. My sheep hear my voice and I know them. And they follow me, verse 28 says. And I give unto them eternal life. And they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hands. Ephesians 2 and verse 10. Ephesians 2 and verse 10. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Jeremiah 29 and verse 11. And this is a verse we should all know and appropriate to our lives. Let's go. For I know the thoughts I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not evil, to give you an expected end. Remain standing, we're going to pray, and still stand even after the prayer. Amen? Bow your heads. Father, we thank you today. We have read your word. I pray now that you will open our hearts and our minds to receive this teaching. Make us what you want us to be, what you destined us to be. In spite of what the enemy is saying to us, help us to draw, drown out the noise of the enemy and to hear your voice. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Praise God. Everybody, put your hands together and praise God. How many of you know who you are? 
How many of you know who you are? Bible says we are a chosen generation. A royal priesthood. A holy nation. A peculiar people. Called to show forth the praises of him. Say, say, say. We are. We are a chosen understand what you're singing you would be dancing and jumping as if you were at the stadium watching your favorite athlete you, you see what I'm saying so we're gonna pick up our feet I want some of you to step out in the aisles ask your neighbor excuse me let me praise the Lord give me some room here step out of your seat come in the aisle some of you come to the altar and lift your voice and say we are a chosen we are a chosen generation call for to show
Bible says can change that. Oh yes. MC Hammer, you can't touch this. I know who I am. Nothing can change that. You ought to know who you are. Nobody, no devil, no demon in hell can change what God says about you. You have been given power, authority to walk in victory. And my sheep hear my voice. I know them and them know me, says the Lord. And they follow me. Whose voice are you listening to? Ask your neighbor, who are you listening to? Everybody make this declaration before you take your seat. As I was praying and preparing this morning, the Lord gave me this. Open up your mouth and shout according to Ephesians 2 verse 10. I am one amazing masterpiece. Created in Christ Jesus. Yes, to do good works. As God's handiwork, As God's handiwork. I, will I will achieve my destiny in the mighty name of Jesus. I will not be stopped, not be stopped. By, the by the thief who comes to steal, comes to steal. kill and destroy. Yes. My God-given purpose, God purpose will not be aborted by the voices that try to destroy me. Instead, instead, I will silence the voices that try to silence me. Every one of them, every one of them, every one of them will be silenced in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Somebody go ahead, open up your mouth, shout hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. You may be seated if you can. <laughs> oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. We, we could go home now. We've already read the word. We've already made declarations. And I prophesy over your life that the devil will take no ground. The devil will have no victory over you. You are made to be winners. You are programmed. You are programmed to be victors, overcomers in the name of Jesus. We're going to talk about silencing the voices that silence you. The subject this morning is destroying the voices that destroy you. Now, after all those scriptures, those three passages, after the song we sang, and after the declarations we made, if you don't get it in your spirit yet, uh, maybe I need to work a little harder to convince you of who you are. Who the word of God says you are because we are destined to win but there are some lies that the devil tells you there are some lies that he whispers in your ears there are some lies that he wants you to believe now Satan has been called many things he has been given many names, even in the Bible. He's a deceiver. He's the tempter. Even the wicked one, the evil one, the prince of the power of the air. Mm. But among the many names that the devil has been called, there is one of them that I think he lives up to most of all. That's the one that says he is the father of lies. How many know that the devil is the father of lies? 
he and his mother-in-law and all of them, <laughs> whoever that is. He is the father of lies and he will tell you lies and you'll believe it. We believe it. We're so stupid, we believe it. So we just read the word. You are a conqueror. You, you, you are awesome. You are blessed. And the devil says, oh, please. I know you in my talk. And you say, you know what? Maybe you're right. But the devil is a lie. We're going to dispel all of that doubt in your minds today. We're going to get rid of all of that falsehood in your minds today. John 8, 44 is where that comes from. He wants you to believe his lies, but don't believe them. Tell your neighbor, don't listen to the devil. Don't believe him. And he always knows how to paint a beautiful picture. The colors are so bright and real. Huh? And he paints a picture that is so convincing that makes you feel like what he's saying makes sense. But today we're going to destroy those voices that are destroying you. And it's a series. I'll see how the Lord leads. Amen. Silencing the voices that silence you. There's a song we sing. We'll probably close with that at the end. Uh, yeah, you know, because I will not be silenced. I will always worship you. As long as I am breathing, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Amen. So there are so many lies that the devil tells us and, and some of them come to beat us down. To make us feel that we are less than what God's word says we are. And I don't know if you'll be honest with me this morning, but all of us have been there. The devil tells us something and he whispers something and, and we begin to really feel down and bad about it. As a matter of fact, there's also another way that the devil comes, not always to make you feel bad about yourself, but he, he can make you feel so good about yourself till you feel like you don't need God. No, I, I know there's nobody here today that feels like that, <laughs> but people all over the world feel so good and powerful and successful and rich and wealthy and feel so good about themselves that they feel they don't need God I don't there's nobody here this morning like that because you wouldn't be here people like that don't don't need to go to church they talk against the church you know and, and sadly even some believers get deceived into feeling they don't need God. But whatever the enemy brings against you, whether it's to make you feel bad about yourself or too good about yourself, the good news is we have the ammunition to take him on. And not just to take him on, but to take him out, at least for a season. Because remember now, one thing about the devil we have learned is that he's not very creative. He uses the same old, same old tricks. That's what he did to Eve in the garden. That's what he did to Jesus when he came out of the wilderness and he had that moment with the devil. If thou be the son of God, command these stones to be made bread. But what did Jesus do? He used the, he used the, he used the word. And so that's the key to your success. Use the word of God. When the devil whispers or shouts in your ears negative thoughts or thoughts that make you feel overconfident, use the word of God. And when the devil tempted Jesus three times successively, uh, um, not successfully, but in succession, what happened? The Bible says, then the devil, come on, help me. Then the devil departed for how long? For a season. In other words, until Jesus returns. 
the devil will be tempting you the devil will be whispering all these kinds of thoughts and these voices will be in your head until Jesus comes but guess what we have the ammunition Lord have mercy we have the ammunition to silence the voices that silence us that's what the Bible says I'm going to share with you some of these voices some of these thoughts that the devil projects in our minds and remember he's a specialist at this because I, I've told you once I've told you a million times the Bible says and Satan having put into the heart of who Judas Iscariot to do what come on come on work with it to do what to betray Jesus who put it in Judas's heart Satan Judas was a good guy Judas was a good disciple but Satan projected this thought in his mind Satan heard a voice that wanted to destroy him and instead of destroying the voice he allowed the voice to destroy him so the devil will project into your mind thoughts voices things that are not true and like Judas if you fall for it you have lost the battle but one of the first things the devil like to trick us with is to tell us I am or if I am not happy then God must not love me there's another word for happy that we don't often interchange but believe it or not the other word for happy is blessed because even the psalm that says blessed is the man who walketh not in the counsel of God blessed is the man the, the real trans translation of that is happy is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly nor sits in the seat of the scornful so you are happy when you are blessed but some people hear a voice that says if I'm not happy if I'm not blessed then God must not love me and if you'll be honest with me this morning some of you can say that when you look around and see what the Lord has done for others the song says, when I look around and see what the Lord has done for me. But some of you are saying, but I look around and I don't see anything the Lord has done for me. But I see what he has done for, for you. I see what he has done for you and you and you. So the enemy will come now in that moment and plant a seed of discouragement in your mind. Because remember, the battlefield is your mind. Your mind is the battlefield that's where it is won or lost that's where the fight is won or lost those that run tracks will tell you it's not out there on the turf it's not out there on the tracks that the race is won it's won in the gym it's won through training and the devil attacks you in the mind because that's where you win or lose Boxers don't win matches in the rings, they win it in the gym. And when they spend time in the gym, they come out in the ring and they are prepared for the opponent because they are ready. And so we have to understand that when the devil projects these lies in our minds, if I'm not blessed, everybody, uh oh, I'm so sorry, please allow me. Somebody sent up a key. A car key to be blessed <laughs> I forgot <laughs> and it just came in right on time so somebody now when I bless this key on the car and thank God for his blessing on the member that has been blessed with this and they're happy and rejoicing you might say you know how long me I pray for your car you know how long me I ask God for bless me with a car a four years now eh? me lose my car seven years ago and hey the devil would want you to feel you are not loved by God because God is blessing others. And the choir was singing this morning, while on others thou art calling, do not pass me by. Look at your neighbor and tell them, even if he passes you by, 
he still loves you even if he doesn't bless you according to your time schedule he still loves you everybody stretch your hands to this father we thank you for your blessings you have blessed your son or your daughter with a car we thank you for it i pray for good driving skills i come against the hands of unreasonable drivers who are reckless on the road i pray for good navigating skills i pray that the presence of jesus will rest in this car in this vehicle that everyone who goes into this vehicle will feel the presence of almighty god we thank you for your blessings in jesus name amen praise god put your hands together and praise god so here you are now you've been praying for a house i could even take it further you've been praying for a spouse <laughs> oh lord help us help us in this place and the vo every time there's a wedding and we announce every time we come and we say uh you know i published the bands of marriage between john doe and Mary Strokes, uh, Spencer of so-and-so, Bachelor, and, and you get a little uncomfortable. Because your biological clock is ticking. Oh, well, where, where my praise, where my, where my, where's my amen corner? Come on, come on. Somebody say amen, amen. or say oh my, oh my, but say something. <laughs> and you feel left out. You feel like, but... I don't see anybody that I can marry. Why isn't God sending me someone that I can marry? Huh? Let me tell you, the answer to that is marriage is not the goal. Let me leave that. I'll come back to that later. Serving God with all your heart is your goal. And if along the way, if, if, somebody say if, if along the way you meet your soulmate, so be it. Go for it. And make sure it's a soulmate and not a hellmate. Because I tell people it's better to be single and happy than to be married and miserable. The apostle Paul told us, he said, those of you that are single or those of you that are widows or widowers, seek not to be married. Stay like me. Paul was not married. And look at what he accomplished. Oh, Bishop, I don't want to hear that message, Bishop. I, I want to hear da 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 or these days they don't play that in, at weddings anymore. It's, this is why I love you. Ooh. This is why I love you. Because I love you. And, and that's your dream. And I pray that God will fulfill your dream. But if it does not happen, it does not mean that you are less than. Bishop, you can talk. 41 years ago, you married. And <laughs> yeah, but you know what? For every year that I've been married, I have married people. Well, not for every year, because I wasn't a marriage officer when I got married. Got married at 26, so you can do the math. <laughs> but for many of those years, people that I have married have not lasted one year. I didn't come to say this, but I might as well. I feel the spirit putting on the brakes right here. I had a wedding many years ago. My daughter was 16. Tiffany turned 16 on the 11th day of December, whatever year it was. I had a wedding. I promised to take my daughter out to show her how any man that came to her talking about he likes her or loves her should treat her. So I took her to the Courtley Hotel in New Kingston. The, the, the appointment was the lunch date where there was 3 p.m. 
And, you know, I was going to pull out the chair for her and say, you make sure that Negro pulls out your chair and don't just go sit. You make sure he opens, tell you to sit down and let him come around and open the car door. Come on, chivalry is still alive. And, and we need to get back some of that in our lives. I see even ladies properly dressed walking down the street with a box lunch. The devil is a liar. Have some dignity about I know you may be hungry, baby, but pull over in a corner or something, man. Don't just be walking down the street and eating. And we all do that. We have to get back some things in our life, some values. I had a 12 o'clock wedding that day. The bride didn't show up at 1 o'clock, Nick. Two o'clock, the bride didn't show up. And I'm looking at my watch because it's, <laughs> it's a three o'clock date with my sweet 60. Three o'clock is when the bride showed up for a 12 o'clock wedding. Three hours late. And I said, what happened? I got to find out, mother. Six bridesmaids, chief and best man. Ring bearers, flower girl, mini bride, the whole shebang. Shoo. All the ladies went to the same hairdresser of the morning. Seven of them, and maybe the bride making eight. But that's not, I'm not telling you that. What I'm telling you is after all of that, she came and I came out of the office smiling like a hypocrite. I was fuming inside. So tell your neighbors, not every time you see Bishop smiling, he's not fuming. I was fuming, but I came out grinning because, you know, I didn't want to spoil their day. I mean, my thing is messed up. And, and in the foyer, before, it wasn't here. It was in Portmore, and it wasn't members. She had just flown in. I didn't even know her, never seen her before, never seen her since. And she was out there fussing with the little ring bearer and arguing and and I was like, what in the world? We did the wedding. I, it's the quickest wedding I ever did. Dearly beloved, we're gathered here together in the sight of God to join together this man and this woman in holy estate of matrimony. Who gave this woman to be? Therefore, if anyone can show just cause why they may not lawfully be joined together, let him now speak or else hereafter forever hold his peace. And I was rushing through man time that was Saturday Tuesday after that Saturday the man called me Bishop have you turned in that document to RGD yet and I'm like what I said yes I turned it in on Monday he said no because we're not going through with this again Saturday, Sunday, Monday, over. You mean after all of that? I tell you the truth that God loves. You wouldn't expect me to be here lying to you. I don't. So I'm saying, it's better to be single and happy than to be married and miserable. Huh? So if, if, if the devil is whispering in your... All your friends getting married and you're just on the shelf which shelf what are you doing on the shelf you better get off that shelf and live your life you better get off that shelf and maximize your potential you better get off that shelf and realize that what God has in store for you is not dependent on some joker coming into your life that won't even celebrate you that won't help to push you into your destiny now, if you get a good one, God bless you. If you get a good man, God bless you. If you get a good woman, God bless you. But don't feel, if you don't get married, that it's the end of your life. Don't feel if you live a single life that you have not experienced life because the devil will whisper these things in your ears but the devil is a liar somebody put your hands together and praise God and so the devil wants you to feel that if you're not happy then God must not love you 
but we're going to destroy those voices that are destroying you and wreaking havoc with your self-esteem. Can somebody say amen? Praise God. God doesn't promise us happiness. In fact, as I said, Paul told us and he told the church in Philippians 1 and verse uh, 29 to 30 and Romans, the Romans church in 8 and verse 17 that suffering is a privilege we get to share with Christ. Suffering is a privilege. What kind of statement is that? It's a paradox. How can suffering be a privilege? Well, in the divine economy of God, his thoughts are far above our thoughts. And his ways are far different from our ways. And so suffering in your economy may not be a privilege, but with God, the Bible says it's a privilege. Can somebody say amen? And we get to share it with Christ. But we can find joy in the midst of our suffering because we know Romans 8, 18 says, Yet what we suffer now is nothing compared to the glory he will reveal to us later on. Can somebody say amen? amen. Let me quickly give you one or two more before we wrap for today. I'm telling you, don't listen to the trash talker. The trash talker comes to speak things in your subconscious mind and you know thoughts begin in the mind and your thoughts become words and your words become what? Actions and your actions become a lifestyle and if you're not careful, if you don't nip it in the bud, if you don't get rid of what the devil is saying to you, some of you right now, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You've been battling all week with negative thoughts and thoughts that are not from God and not like God. But God has sent me today in this teaching to let you know you must not listen to the trash talker. Some people just talk trash. How many of you have experienced that in the workplace? In, in your neighborhood, you have neighbors that just always talk in trash. Just always, you know, and, and even parents make the mistake of doing it. And telling their children you will never amount to anything good even teachers god forbid will look at students in a class that are slow learners and are not learning as fast as everybody else and tell them oh you're not gonna amount to anything you won't pass the exam the devil is a liar why are you there teacher you are there to motivate them you are there to find out their learning style rather than condemning them rather than speaking doubt and negativity over them and i speak to the parents as well don't you ever tell your children about your black and ugly like you know good good for nothing pooper and this kind of people do it even today but thank God for parents that are wisening up and understand even if your child is slow even if your child is hard of hearing like tick broken at them ears you have to be the parent you have to be the one that says I'm gonna find a way that's why God placed them in your life God knew what he was doing and you have what it takes to bring out the best. Look at somebody and tell them, bring out the best in your children. Bring out the best in your children. Parent, bring out the best in your students. Teachers, bring out the best, bring out the best. Yes, another thing the devil likes to tell us is I am alone and I'm the only one who struggles with blank. Fill in the blank. The devil tells you you are alone. Yeah, I sing on the choir, but I'm the only one who struggles with lust. Can I be real? Raise your hand. Which of you struggles with lust? Oh, I'm kidding. I'm just... <laughs> I don't know. I, I would never do you that. But it happens. Come on, it happens. We are all human. I tell you, God is not going to make all the women ugly just to keep you holy. Oh, let me leave that alone. You're not ready for me today. 
You're not ready for me today. So, the devil whispers in your ears, you're alone. Look at all them worshiping. Look how they make up their face. You ever see some people worship and make up their face? Like, I mean, it just can't make up anymore. And it, it appears to be deep worship. And that's, that's okay. But that doesn't mean they're really sanctified and righteous as they look. <laughs> Maybe they're really trying to get forgiveness in that. And that's okay because this is the place for it. But the devil wants you to feel you are the only one struggling with fornication. Oh Lord. You are the only one struggling with adulterous thoughts. I've been an open book before you. I've told you, especially I remember the first time it really hit me. He was circle, a young man. Must not have been 20 yet. Preached until my clothes were soaking wet. And on my way home, I struggled with lustful thinking. And I was the one who just delivered the sermon. Come on, you know it happens. That's why we see headlines in the Catholic Church and the Pentecostal Church and the Church of God. There are men of God and women of God who struggle with these issues. And sometimes it's because the devil comes and puts those thoughts and those voices in our head. And instead of doing like Jesus and using the word of God to rebuke him, and take a stand and say, get thee behind me, Satan. It is written, flee youthful lust. But you, you, I, I used to say, why am I thinking like this? Why, why are these thoughts coming to me? The bishop's son, the preacher. The devil is a liar. I learned not to take responsibility for those thoughts. It was not my thought. I didn't create it. I didn't go out there looking for trouble. It just happened to be in my path and I have to learn how to swim with the sharks without getting eaten alive. In other words, I have to learn how to be in the world but not of the world. Oh, 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 somebody say amen. So sisters, you go to work and before you get to your desk, you know, 15 different men are eyeing you and preying you and saying all kinds of nice remarks and some of them are not even nice they're, they're just outright crazy but but you have to still take a stand you have to hear those things and learn how to silence the voices that are trying to silence you because if you're not careful before you know it you will have fallen into the trap but God is true the word of God is true. I am what the word of God says I am. I can do what the word of God says I can do. I can have what the word of God says I can have. I can be what the word of God says I can be. His word says I can be victorious. Can somebody shout yes? His word says I am free. Can somebody shout freedom? In the name of Jesus. I'm free to live in this world and have a testimony about the overcoming power. We're not careful. We become so obsessed with the thoughts that the devil is projecting in our minds. Hebrews 4.15 says that Jesus experienced the same temptations we do. Because of his experience, he is able to sympathize with whatever we might struggle with. And he's not the only one, though he is the most important. But the author of Ecclesiastes wrote, history merely repeats itself. It has all been done before. Nothing under the sun is truly new, according to Ecclesiastes chapter 1 and verse 9. Beloved, you may feel alone, but you're not alone. Oh, look at your neighbor and say, you're not alone. You're not alone. Oh, that's just your cross that you must bear. That's just your trial that you must go through. But after you go through the fire, after you go through the fire, 
after you go through the trials after you go through the testings he's gonna bring you out you're gonna come out as pure gold God has a plan for your life he says I know the thoughts I think towards you thoughts of peace and not evil I think of you in terms of bringing you to an expected end do you know what an expected end is let me ask you what is your expectation of your end what's the end game of all this that you're doing what do you wish to see at the end of your walk what is it what about the V word victory somebody shout victory I expect victory in my walk with God what about the W word? Somebody shout winners. I, oh, I'm a winner. Elaine can tell you she never goes on the track thinking to lose. Whether she win, lose, or draw, she goes there. Yes, they go there wanting to win. And every day that you get up, you should look in the mirror and look yourself in the eye and say, Hey, winner, today is another day and there is nothing that the devil can throw at me that me and God cannot handle together. I'm a winner. Somebody shout yes. One more and we close for today. It's a series. The devil whispers into our ears and we hear voices saying, I have to be perfect. I have to be perfect. Anybody ever felt that way? Because you're called unto holiness. And in an apostolic church, we preach holiness. I mean, I know other churches do, but in Pentecost, I mean, living right, walking right, now that we preach. Now that we teach. So all you sit on like and now raise your hand and say, whoever hear the devil saying, you, you need to be perfect. Of course, the devil is telling you that. Not because he wants you to be perfect, but because he knows you are not. And when you know you are not, and he's saying, yeah, but you should be perfect, you begin to feel guilty. Come on, come on, come on, church of God. You begin to feel guilty before God. How many of you, honestly now, if anybody wants to look at you, that's their business. But how many of you, sometimes you come to church and in the heights of worship, people are worshiping God, but you don't feel worthy. Come on, raise your hand. This is honest business now. This is not a trick. I, I feel that way sometimes because I don't measure up to what the standard is. Jesus is holy and he says be ye holy even as the Lord your God is holy and I know I, I had a little fuss with my wife last week and I know I, I looked at somebody funny and I know I might have said something that hurt somebody and I don't feel perfect and I feel like I, you know I'm just not what I'm supposed to be if that has been your experience raise your hand because I want you to know we're gonna trash the trash talker today we're going to destroy the voices that are destroying you we are going to silence the voices that are silencing you and want you to feel less than and want you to feel like you can't make it and want you to feel like you don't deserve to be in the house of God but when David said I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart uh, I will enter his courts with praise I will say this is the day that the Lord has made I will rejoice for he has made me glad I will rejoice regardless of what the voices are saying in David's head don't you forget who David was he committed adultery with Bathsheba he killed Uriah my God God said he's a man after my own heart you are striving for perfection but until you get there you come in the house of God make it right with God have a little talk with Jesus tell him all about your troubles tell him all about your weaknesses and let him wash you and cleanse you and purge you stand to your feet everybody in the name of Jesus we're silencing the voices that silence us sister Samuel silencing the voices that silence us you have a right to be here look at somebody and tell them you have a right to be here 
You may not have done everything right, but you have a right to be here. You may not have done everything perfectly, but you have a perfect right to be here. For this is the house of God. Let me tell you something. You remember the ark? Noah's ark. Noah's ark was the smelliest, stinkest place. The animals went in two by two. And Noah and his sons and their wives and the animals locked up in the ark for 40 days and 40 nights. No toilets. No running water. They pass gas. They number two. Lord have mercy. You're looking at me like it's gross. That's what we all do. And for 40 days, they are in this ark with the animals. How many of you ever stepped in dog poop? Oh, no. Bishop, come on, man. But all of that was taking place in the ark. And guess what? It was the smelliest place, but it was the safest place to be. So the next time people tell you, oh, I don't, I'm not going to any church because they're hypocrites. Tell them, well, when you find one, please don't join it because you're going to mess it up. You're going to be the first one there. People use those stupid little lines. Don't listen to that. And the devil will tell you, you shouldn't come to church today. After how your cousin carried on last week. I told you and I close with this. I was driving my car one day and I saw a member, a relatively new convert, years ago. I couldn't hear. My windows are always up. And I could tell by the body language that it was a cuss carrying, I was cussing and fighting, not fighting, but they were having harsh words. So when I got parallel with the person, the member, I touched my window about half inch down. You know, you can begin to hear. And let me tell you, I didn't know she was a dressmaker. She was talking about so much cloth. I was like, serious? I wonder if she could make the choir robes. I mean, <laughs> bad word after bad word. New convert. What did I do? I prayed for her. I pray. I say, God help her. Give her a strength to overcome. Now, if some of you had seen her, when you don't cuss her out, she never put back her foot in church. Today, she's working in ministry today she's sweetly saved is she perfect i don't know that's between god and her but she has not given up because the voices that were trying to destroy her were destroyed by her commitment to keep on coming to the house of god somebody clap your hands and thank god today Yes. Let's read one scripture before we close. In Romans 7, verse 18 to 20. You know who Paul was? The apostle? He wrote most. He's the guy who wrote the majority of the New Testament. Romans, Romans chapter 7, verse 18 to 20. Can you get that? on the screen and I know King James says for I know that in me that is in my flesh and he didn't say I know that in you in your he said me he included himself the great apostle the anointed man that God chose to be the apostle to the Gentiles for I know Let's read it together. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me. But how to perform 
that which is good I find not. Next. For the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. Now, if I do that I would not, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. My God. Somebody say, sin has to die. Sin has to die. Let me ask you one final question. What is in the middle of sin? Who? <laughs> Lord help us. Lift your hands all over this building.